If you've seen my video on my poor friend who, you know, unfortunately turned one of these cans slightly upside down while spraying a very hot scope from being in the desert sun and shattered the front objective lens, then you're probably wondering, what are my options if I don't want to use compressed air, right? Because, you know, like there's other reasons. Obviously, there's propellant involved and some people are environmentally conscious about some of the propellants. Uh, this can run out. Uh, this gets very cold. And if you're trying to blow off a lot of things at a time, uh, you have to manage the cold or else it, it doesn't, you know, have as much air. So you have to let it kind of heat up again and, and uh, you know, get the frost off of it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different compelling reasons why a, an air duster, if you will, or compressed air may not always be the best choice when you are out at a match or traveling with your guns or maybe even in your shop if you don't have a, an actual air compressor to use. So I thought I would show you what I think is probably one of the best solutions, and that is a straight manual air duster. Now, I happen to have a couple different sizes. These are uh, sort of what would be considered more on the uh, not cheaper end. Uh, they are a little slightly more professional for camera people. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I just know that it's like Giotto's, G-I-O-T-T-O-S. I'll put a link in the description below, of course, for um, all the different sizes here. And I wanted to do a very super unscientific test just to show you how different things compare in terms of cleaning dust off of a scope. Now, at any given time when you're at a match, you could find yourself with a little bit of dirt in here. In fact, I actually have some laying around in this objective. Uh, you might find that maybe your action needs to get a little dust blown out of it or something like that. And that's where I've always turned to an air duster. I've always kept one of these. I have a nice little sleeve that's meant for a water bottle in my range bag. And I usually will throw this in there. Uh, I can tell you that I've now replaced it with one of these. And uh, let me just kind of walk you through it. So, you know, we could blow out this, we could blow off, uh, you know, the, the actual turrets, we could blow off the eyepiece, things like that. But what I thought I would do, I have these five white tiles. They all have the exact same amount. I weighed them out, it's 30 grains of uh, dirt. Uh, this is all uh, from my wife's planting. So it is, uh, I don't know, topsoil or something like that. So anyway, I'm just kind of smashing it down onto these porcelain plates. And I thought it would be kind of fun to see how does everything compare. So what we're going to do is we're going to do compressed air. Actually, I'll do compressed air over here. We're going to do the large, the small, and the medium. And then this one's just going to be me blowing it off uh, as if I was just, you know, at a match and used just my mouth to blow off uh, a scope. So first we're going to start over here. Now, I'm not going to lie. I, I haven't done this test but I have every faith that this is probably going to clean these off the best and the fastest. I don't think we're really debating that, but let's just see what this does. So, okay. Yep, that pretty much did it. And you can see that with a couple dustings, it is, I mean, it's pretty clean. So, and this is porcelain, so it is obviously going to be uh, very smooth. It is not retaining uh, dirt nearly as much as other surfaces might, but I thought the white tile would make for a good comparison. So then we have the large uh, air duster. Again, uh, in a matter of several strokes, no different than this. We have a completely clean uh, piece of tile. Let's see what two strokes from the medium one does. Okay, so about the same. You can tell there's a little less air pressure coming out of that one. Boy, I'm making a mess over there. Uh, then we have the small. Yeah, this one I have to definitely work a little harder to clean. Um, I don't feel like the small one does nearly the job. So I've got a little dust there. Yeah, so even just going up to the medium blasted that off a little better. Oh yeah, and you can definitely feel a difference with this. Uh, and then we just have this. So, you know, if, if it was just me, uh, also very effective. Now that is just uh, plain tile. So let me clean this up a little. What I want to do is now flip it over and use the bottom side of the tiles, which is the rough porcelain uh, without any of the glazing on it. And we're gonna kind of do the same test just to show uh, how it affects something that's a little grippier. 
I got reset here and I actually am going to do something different. So I had what measured out 30 grains of topsoil on the porcelain glaze side. This is the natural raw, uh, you know, porcelain underneath and or ceramic, whatever. And uh, what I did is I actually put 50 grains of garnet sand. This is the same stuff that I put in like my rear bag. It is incredibly dense, very heavy uh, for what it is. And I have been rubbing it into the uh, the back sides here, trying to give it, you know, the best spread that I can. So let's take a look and see what happens here. So let's start with the canned air. All right. Well, again, as expected, cleaned it out really nicely. I do like the large one. It seems to do a really nice job. Everything got blown out the same. You know, it took about three puffs. So let's see what three puffs here does. Not quite as much. So what did it take me? About five, five puffs. And... Um, Looks pretty good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so you know, eight or nine to get a similar effect. And if I blow, all right, well, there you go. So it is possible. Now I realize this is highly unscientific. It just goes to show you there are different ways to do it that don't require canned air. And I figure since you guys are watching this thing get all beat up, uh, let's see what this tool does to it. So we can see, I don't know how easily you can see, but there is a, I can kind of draw a line in it here. Okay, so let's see. So I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it clean. And then I'm gonna hit it with the compressed air just to kind of see what I think of it. But, all right, so like that would be, you know, within reason how clean I can get it with that. Now, well, you know, there's still a little bit of stuff inside the ring here. I don't feel like that was made any better with the compressed air. It got a little bit more off the outside. Like I don't feel there was like this very minor, maybe little dusting feel that I had uh, when I was done with just the manual blower. But other than that, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's it's obviously just a little better with the canned air, but I don't know that it's enough that it would matter to me at a match. So, uh, you know, I I definitely am sold, especially after watching the problems that my buddy had. I am willing to do the trade off against this. I obviously still use this in my shop all the time. In a normal situation where you're not in extreme climates, uh, you know, you're probably less likely to have a problem. But this has now gone into the little water bottle pocket where I used to keep the compressed air. I never have to worry about running out. I never have to worry about cracking a lens when it's hot out. And I can reach into just about anywhere that I could reach into. Uh, with this tip uh, without a problem. So there you go. There's some options for you and I uh, hope it helps. I'll talk to you guys later.